execute a 7.5G afterburning turn and exit the flight line vertically, showcasing the Super Hornet's turbo nose load capability. So those were some lovely demonstrations of the maximum rate and minimum radius turns that can be made by the F-16 and the F-18 respectively, because these are excellent examples of an airplane with, in the case of the F-16, a very, very good turn rate, and in the case of the F-A-18, the F -A, a very, very small turn radius, at least for a fighter plane. And I want to talk about the sort of physics and characteristics of why these respective airplanes have the advantages that they do. And it's going to come down to two things, which are the maximum G-loading of the airplane and the minimum speed of the airplane. Because the slower you can get an airplane, the smaller its turn radius is, it's, is going to be. And the more Gs you can pull with an airplane, the higher the turn rate is going to be. Although turn rate and turn radius both depend on both G loading and on minimum aircraft speed or stall speed. And I want to show you some mathematics as to why. And so first off, if you don't know, uh, we need to discuss the idea of centripetal acceleration, which all that is is the fact that if you want to move in a circle, uh, you are technically continuously accelerating, right? Just like um, a common example that's given is objects in orbit, right? When a satellite is in orbit around the Earth, like the International Space Station uh, or a communication satellite or something, it's technically always accelerating down and falling towards the center of the Earth, uh, but it moves in a circular path, right? And a you know, simple demo that's often given is like this, where you take some object and put it on a string and then you spin it around. And because it's, you know, spinning in a circle, it's continuously accelerating towards the center, right? Because the string stays taut and it's able to not, well, it, it actually does fall when it reaches the top of its arc, right? And if you slow it down to just the right speed, it kind of, you know, falls at the same rate, but <laughs> that'll eventually make it slip out of plane as it's kind of hard to control. But you get the idea, right? If you just pull something towards the center of a circle continuously as it moves around, uh, you will get a, well, a circular path, but the acceleration will always be pointed towards the center, right? And so with an airplane, this manifests as the airplane starts out flying straight and level, right? And then it banks in one direction. And so initially there's a lift vector pointing straight up from the aircraft's wings, and then it rolls. And then that lift vector is now pointing partially to the side. And by the time it's pulling its maximum G load, it's pointed almost completely horizontally. And so we're gonna basically just make the approximation that it's exactly horizontal because uh, I believe it goes like the inverse, the angle is the inverse cosine of the g-loading, something like that. I believe that's correct. Because the higher the the higher the g-loading, the steeper the angle that you're going to need, and by the time you're, or rather the yeah, the higher the G-loading, the steeper the angle, or another way of looking at it is the steeper the angle, the higher the G-loading you are going to need in order to uh, still have enough vertical component of that lift vector to not start falling down. And so, well, then that's great. So the more acceleration you have, the better you're able to travel in that circular path. And so let me show you some definitions here, uh, which I guess I could put this um, into virtual land, but I like uh, this piece of paper better for whatever reason. Uh, especially since I'm doing these blender animations, I could really just, uh, you know, put this on my, take note, take notes on my graphics tablet, but uh, I like this better. <laughs> I don't know why. So you start off with defining this thing called omega, which omega is the turn rate, right? You can basically think about that as, it's not actually how many degrees per second, but it's, you know, how many, how much 
angle per second. It's measured in radians, but you, you know, uh, to get to actually get the proper units for this, take the turn rate in degrees per second and then divide that by 180, multiply it by 2 pi, or divide it by 360, multiply it by 2 pi, or divide by 180, multiply by pi, to get the angular velocity or the turn rate in radians per second. So it'll be 2 pi, you know, is one complete circle. So if you're doing one circle per second, you have a turn rate of 2 pi radians per second. And then there's the turn radius, which is more self-explanatory. It's just you're moving in some circular arc, and the radius of that circle is your turn radius. And then, of course, there's the velocity, which is the speed at which you're moving along that circular arc. And we're treating all of these like you're in a constant steady state turn. And omega is just going to be the velocity divided by the radius, right? And so that's where we, why we, why we want to use radians, right? Is because, you know, the circumference of the circle is 2 pi times the radius, and the velocity is just the velocity. So, you know, divide circumference by velocity, and you get how long it takes to go around, around in the circle. And if we define our radians with that whole, you know, 2 pi instead of 360 degrees, everything just works out nicely. And so next up, we gonna we are going to need the definition of centripetal acceleration, or rather, we're going to need the quantity for centripetal acceleration, which is if you are moving through a arc of a given a circle of a given radius or a circular arc of a given radius, and you're at some velocity, it's going to be that your acceleration towards the center is equal to the velocity squared divided by that radius and with the direction pointing inwards uh, towards the center uh, of the circle. And so the magnitude of that acceleration is just the velocity squared divided by the magnitude of that radius, because technically these are all vectors, except when they have the magnitude signs around them. Uh, but then remember, since we have uh, omega defined as v over r, we can also sort of do this little bit of algebra here, which again, um, I've done for you, but if you're an undergraduate student in either in physics or in mechanical or aerospace engineering, this is a, a good exercise to go through, as are the subsequent steps I'm going to show you on the next slide. Uh, to arrive at the acceleration can also be expressed as omega squared times r, right? So you can either express it as velocity squared divided by radius or turn rate squared times radius. And so then where that becomes important is when we want to evaluate sort of the other way around, right? Where the airplane just has some maximum G loading, right? The the actual wings at a certain point are gonna start like, you know, let me get a, right? Eventually the wings are actually gonna bend and eventually they'll break, right? So there's only so, much, so many Gs that an airplane can actually physically pull. And so there's a, a maximum value for this centripetal acceleration, right? And this is where we're making the approximation that the maximum G is essentially pointed horizontally because uh, if you're pulling nine G's, you know, um, the, you know, the horizontal component uh, is pretty darn, you know, in order to get one G of vertical component, you only need to be, a, you know, a few degrees off from, yeah, 90, right? Uh, I'll put up what the actual value is uh, when I'm in the editing phase, but it's, you know, pretty close to 90 degrees. Even at 7.5 Gs, uh, the bank angle is quite steep. But so, assume that the maximum G loading is just, you know, pointed towards the center of the circle. And then we're also going to assume that the velocity of the airplane has some minimum value. And this is where things get a little bit dicey, because technically the 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 maximum g loading is just a structural limitation strictly speaking the minimum velocity is not it depends on wing loading and wing loading in turn actually depends on g technically depends on g limit um, but we're just going to treat it as some constant value and it's really i've written this as v stall this should be v stall at some you know sort of nominal amount of fuel with um air-to-air -air weapons only, and at max G loading. And also, I should say, at a particular altitude, because it also depends on altitude. But for simplicity's sake, we're just going to treat it as a constant and call it the stall speed, which is the minimum speed of the airplane. 
v stall and we need to have an acceleration less to, less than or equal to v squared over r otherwise we're going to break the wings and it also has to be you know less than or equal to omega squared times r which is equal to v squared over r uh, so if we just rearrange that real quick to see what is omega in terms of acceleration and radius we get that uh, omega is equal to the square root of a over r and r is equal to a over omega squared so that's getting closer to something something useful because r and omega are still uh, not the uh, sort of physical characteristics of the aircraft, their characteristics of the turn that we're trying to analyze. And so, uh, sorry, I have to go back. let me go back for a second, is that, remember, we want a large turn, we want omega to be a large number, we want r to be a small number, right? And that's because I'm not going to get into aerial combat tactics because that's not my expertise, but there's things called a one circle fight and a two circle fight. And, you know, basically if airplanes are sort of, you know, chasing each other through the sky, um, you know, you can imagine one scenario where, or, let me, oh, it got to be facing backwards, right? Where they're sort of, you know, in a, in a chase around each other. And then, um, you know, maybe I'll do a little animation. Whoever can, you know, turn faster, the higher turn rate, uh, can get, you know, behind the other person's tail more easily uh, and, you know, shoot at them. Um, and there's also something called a one circle fight, though, where instead of actually getting, you know, directly behind the other airplane, you try to get sort of, you know, your nose pointing at them, but while their nose is still kind of pointing at you, but not quite, and shoot at them that way. Um, so not going to go into how one and two circle fights work. Go play DCS or, you know, watch a million different YouTube videos on uh, BFM. But uh, I'm trying to explain why these airplanes have the turn radius and turn rate that they do. So for our purposes, it's just small turn radius is good, high turn rate is good. So then how do we express turn radius and turn rate in terms of uh, these things that are characteristics of the airplane, the minimum velocity, V, and the maximum G loading, A, uh, which A is, you know, a unit of acceleration. So the difference between G loading and acceleration is just you know, measure, you know, G loading is just acceleration measured in units of Earth's gravity uh, instead of measuring in feet per second per second or meters per second per second, which is typically what you would use. Um, I, I, I hate to admit it, but really it's much better to use meters per second per second. But anyways, so we have that, you know, and again, I've done the algebra for you, but if you're uh, looking for a nice little exercise to do, I recommend trying it out for yourself. That if a is equal to v squared over r, that implies that r is equal to v squared over a. That one's pretty simple. And so that explains why to have a small turn radius, you want v, the numerator, to be as small a number as possible, right? And that's where the f18 really shines. It has a very, very low stall speed. And then you want the acceleration a to be as large a number as possible, right? Because it's in the denominator dividing this number. And so the F-18 is not too shabby on that front, right? It can pull seven and a half Gs, which is pretty solid. But of course the F-16 uh, has a much higher stall speed. Although again, it depends on a gajillion things, um, but it has a better uh, maximum G loading. And so it doesn't do quite so well on the V squared, but it does bit better on the A. Uh, but overall the F-18 uh, wins out on this one, the turn radius, because it's v squared divided by a, versus it's a little bit more complicated down here. Uh, and it might look like some circular reasoning uh, if you go through the steps, but it is just it is just algebra. Uh, and again, a good exercise if you're an undergraduate student. And we start with the maximum g loading is a, um, which is equal to omega squared r, do some sort of substitutions in here, and we end up with the fact that the turn rate is actually equal to the maximum g loading a divided by the stall speed v I'll, again you might not actually be flying at the stall speed stall speed in turn depends on a bunch of other things but we'll again for simplicity's sake just whatever the minimum speed is and the minimum speed of the f-16 is considerably higher than the f-18 but it has a much better maximum g loading at 9 instead of 7.5 and so this one you'll see you basically notice that these are almost the reciprocal of each other, right? This is a over v, and this is v squared over a. And so it, and again, we want this one to be small and this one to be large. 
So they're actually very similar to each other, but this one has V squared and this one just has V. So acceleration will help you out with both and being able to fly slow will help you out with both. But being able to fly slow helps you out more with your turn radius and being able to pull more Gs helps you out more with your turn rate. And so that's why the F-16 with its 9G maximum G loading uh, can have such a good turn rate and have not too shabby a turn radius, but definitely not as good as the F-18, which in turn does have a much slower turn rate because it has a lower G loading, but because it can fly slower, uh, as I show you, it depends on the radius depends on V squared, it can have a much smaller turn radius. So hopefully that makes sense, uh, probably clear as mud. But uh, yeah, it's a good little exercise I would encourage you to go through if you're an undergraduate student, especially in mechanical aerospace engineering, but also in physics. And uh, yeah, let's enjoy another uh, demo from the air show. <laughs>